There's a beautiful site just east of Ballarat known as Gong Gong Reservoir. This picturesque and highly manicured garden displays an interesting interplay of volcanism, which highlights the many iterations this ancient land has undergone throughout the vast recesses of time. And we're going to nerd out on what these rocks tell us and the epic story that follows. This cutting here shows the ancient 360 million year old granodiorite and quartz monzonite that was once located within an active and churning magma chamber deep beneath the earth. And the last time it was alive in its magmatic state was during the late Devonian period. Meaning this body of magma, which stretches for a massive distance beneath the land, with it outcropping in various places here and there, penetrated the crust at a time far before the age of the dinosaurs. And placed neatly on top of it is the most recent basaltic lava flows that buried vast swathes of land, covering almost one third of the entire state of Victoria beneath basaltic rock that could be 60 meters or more in its depth. This beautiful interplay shows how dynamic this land once was and still is, with ancient intrusives and more younger extrusives in full display, hugging one another in a strange embrace. When it was decided that this area would be made into a reservoir some 160 odd years ago, the inception of the beautiful gardens that you see here began. As you can see, the rocks here were all quarried to make the beautiful pathways and garden beds, with basalt, granodiorite and quartz monzonite so beautifully interlaced and carefully selected in its positioning. You can still see sections of the large rocks that were quarried by hand with a chisel bit by bit, and areas are designated for basalt and others for the quartz monzonite and granodiorite. So what do these rocks tell us? This granodiorite, as the name suggests, is a middle ground between granite and diorite. Whenever we see this rock, we know that an ancient subduction zone occurred here. The same goes for quartz monzonite. This name is probably very familiar to any geology nerds from the US, as the goldfields are dominated by these types of rocks, as a result of the active subduction zone occurring there. And this is a perfect model to explain what occurred here 360 million years ago. These rocks are commonly associated with volcanic arcs, especially in Cordilleran mountain building events. The Great Dividing Range straddles this region, and is at its highest elevation in the area between Ballarat and Creswick. But the formation of it occurred long, long after this granodiorite and quartz monzonite was deposited here. Instead, if we look at the fault map, we can see the truth of its origin. It's right on the border of a major fault line. This fault line is the boundary of one of the many subduction events that occurred in Victoria. And similar to the Andes, this area was once a site of extreme chaos as earthquakes and volcanism run rampant during the time of the Devonian across much of the state of Victoria, from east to west. In this region, this line here shows us that an ancient oceanic plate dipped beneath the continental crust of ancient Victoria, meaning where I am right now was once the border between the dry land of Victoria to the west and the ancient Paleo-Pacific Ocean to the east. On the gravity map, we see something fantastic this perfect rounded blue shape here is granodiorite and quartz monzonite. It stretches deep into the earth, and as you can tell, it takes up a massive area of land. Batholiths are massive magma chambers formed by very large igneous intrusions that extend to an unknown depth into the earth's crust. So even though this rock never had a chance to erupt, this land would have been one chaotic hellscape with supervolcanoes and typical Plinian volcanoes existing at this time, pretty much en masse across the entire state. This time period was Victoria's most ferocious, at least in terms of the volcanism that was experienced here. And nothing has come close to the disastrous eruptions that occurred in this state at that point in time. If this magma had have erupted rather than solidify, the rock released would have been known as rhyodacite which is the extrusive version of granodiorite. When this magma solidifies in the earth without erupting, it's known as an intrusive. If it erupts, the name becomes rhyodacite, and that is an extrusive, because it was extruded onto the earth. So these rocks are associated with some pretty intense and devastating explosive eruptions if they make it to the surface. 
But it never had a chance to do that. Instead, it cooled and solidified beneath the Earth 360 million years ago, only to eventually be exposed via erosion. As you can see, there's colour changes in the intrusive rocks here. Why? Because in a slowly cooling magma chamber, things begin to separate. Everything has a different melting point, and because of this, as the temperature cooled here, minerals began to separate and accumulate in different regions in the ever-cooling magma chamber, as crystallisation occurred, leaving us with different mineral assemblages. And thus, we have different coloured iterations of the same rock from the same magma chamber because of this. Then we have the recent basalt that was erupted en masse across the state beginning around 7 million years ago, transforming Victoria into the third largest volcanic plain to currently exist on our planet. These volcanoes penetrated through the crust as Australia passed over a magmatic hotspot. We've already made a video that addresses this topic, you can find a link to that in the description. And to this day, this region is still technically considered to be volcanically active, and it's very probable that more eruptions will occur in time, although they'll probably be situated much farther south or southwest from this current location due to the positioning of the hotspot in present day, with Australia drifting north over it ever more. It's worth noting that if Victoria hadn't become recently faulted and stretched by the rift event between it and Antarctica, then it's very likely that the recent basaltic eruptions would have partially melted these intrusives and would have released more explosive eruptions as a result. But because they rose with ease, their journey seems to have been one that was quick and easy. When viewed on magnetics, we can see exactly where these basaltic eruptions occurred from. And we can find the centres that release the lava, that would eventually flow over the ancient granodiorite and quartz monzonite. The lava flows here were intense. They occurred en masse and completely altered the land. They flowed over these intrusives, burying them for some time, before erosion eventually revealed the underlying intrusive rocks again. At least it did in this region. So here we have hundreds of millions of years of history staring right at us, that speak of how different and chaotic this land once was in the vast recesses of time. It's likely a volcanic arc once dominated here, and I'd be willing to bet that it still exists to some extent deep beneath the earth. But that's a subject for another video. Thanks for watching.